there is a sense of um, inferiority about being in St. Louis. We think that the outside perception of St. Louis is going to be a negative one. The research that we have um, has found that people just are kind of neutral on St. Louis. St. Louis just isn't thought of that much, right? And you could argue, well, why should we be? But when you look in the mirror and you don't recognize yourself, it's going to be very hard to put develop a sales strategy to tell somebody about what it is they should be looking at. This is where it all begins, so say goodbye to all your fears, all your doubts. This is where they die. This is where we come to win, we come to fly. This is where we make our dreams come to life. Welcome to Innovation City. Welcome to Innovation City, a podcast featuring the innovators, disruptors, and creators who are making things happen. My name is Michael T. Johnson, and I am here, as always, with my co-host, Tyler Kelly. Today, we're at Venture Cafe St. Louis. If you're not familiar with Venture Cafe, it is the largest gathering of innovators, creators, disruptors anywhere in the world. So if you're near a city that has a Venture Cafe, I suggest you go check it out, and I think you're going to really like it. Uh, I'm very excited today because we have... Allison Babka and Lee Broughton with us on the show. Thank you for being here, both of you. Thank you. Welcome. So Allison is a St. Louis-based award-winning journalist and copywriter. Uh, she's done a lot of really cool work, including work for Venture Cafe. Yes. The magazine, what's the name of the magazine? Happen Magazine. I should totally know Hashtag that. Hashtag Happen Mag. Happen Mag. So that, that was really successful, and another one is gonna be coming out soon, right? We're hoping. Maybe. We're hoping. That's Let's get the talks. funding, Travis. <laughs> yes. Uh, she has uh, interviewed innovators, business owners, quirky folks about their creative spark, and really that's what drives a lot of your content that you like to produce. Absolutely. And then Lee, 20 plus years in brand marketing, former global VP of Enterprise Holdings uh, on the brand side, and recently founded a company, BBC, a branding company, and you both are part of uh, a team that is bringing to life the STL Made movement, and that's what we're here to talk about today. So welcome. Thank you. So first off, tell us about the STL Made movement. Why is that important? What is it? What's happening there? Well, just as your intro said, basically the movement is really shining the light on individuals that represent the innovators, the thinkers, the doers, the makers in the St. Louis region that are really driving our region into a renaissance. And the STL Made um, concept is really wanting to organize ourselves to really shape a perception that the region of St. Louis is in renaissance. And when you look at the ground level and all of the startup communities that we've got, the innovation districts that we're in right now, um, and you think a little bit about um, the culture that we have here, um, some of the art, the music scene, the food, the beverage scene here, um, it's really in a, a time in, in history that I think we'll look back on and say, yep, there was something really going on then. And that's what the STL movement's all about. Yeah, so if we're in that renaissance, so you mentioned a lot of cool things happening. And so why is that so exciting besides just, hey, we've got great food and there's a lot of cool stuff happening right now? Like, what's that leading toward? Yeah, I think that's, that, I mean, it's that, that's a great question because at the end of the day, cities are shaping a narrative for themselves in an attempt to really compete hard for the next investor dollar, the next new resident, the next startup idea that's going to um, bring a certain, you know, kind of allure to the place. And I think it's time for St. Louis to have its narrative told. Um, there is lots of cities that I think would be considered peer cities to St. Louis um, and to some extent subordinate cities to St. Louis who are well underway with talking about a narrative in a very collaborative, um, joined up way with the economic development industries, with the culture industries in their places. And they're doing it in, in a very deliberate and systematic way. This is St. Louis's turn, and that is what the STL Made movement's all about. That's really cool. So, Allison, a lot of times, you know, we we here in St. Louis know how how awesome St. Louis is, but right. on the outside, you know, the rest of the world, if you will, is like St. Louis is perceived in a certain way. So, what are you guys doing to kind of change that global perception of the city? Well, it's really interesting because the research that we have um, has found that people just are kind of neutral on St. Louis. They don't think of it as bad or particularly awesome, just, oh, it's there, it's a great city, fine. Um, 
we're trying to to target the folks in our own backyard. Um, what we're finding is that St. Louisans don't actually know what's happening here about all the great innovation that's happening here. Um, and those are the kind of sparks that we want to happen. We want to um, help people become torchbearers. Once they understand, once they can see, once they can get involved, they're going to want to spread the word. That's awesome. So talk a little bit, a little bit more about narrative and really storytelling and why that narrative is so important for people. Yeah, great. Well, I mean, f- first of all, I think the the what better way to connect with each other than through storytelling, right? There is a whole um, idea that after shelter companionship, um, really all we need is stories. So one of the first things we really wanted to do was spend a bit of time understanding the research, as Alison pointed out, which was that essentially there really isn't that much of a perception of St. Louis outside of St. Louis. But inside of St. Louis, we're a little less convinced about what we have. And a part of that is we are sort of tending to live in micro communities. So in my micro community, I might feel very energetic and feel very um, inspired by my neighborhood. But I don't really see that energy and that um, kind of excitement as something that is shared by my neighbor in another neighborhood. One of the things we want to do through storytelling is demonstrate how individuals are really all torchbearers, exactly as Allison said, in the work they're doing that is moving our region forward today. So it's going to be amplifying the things that are being done by the people versus just talking about the critical mass that there might be here or the, the facts that are representing attributes. Very difficult to tell stories with facts and figures. Much more able to kind of connect when you start thinking about the people that are doing them. So really the STL.com, which Alison is the editor-in-chief of, will really become the, the house in which those stories are told about the people that live here. I think what's really great about all of this is that you know, we're weaving this big tapestry of what St. Louis is and what it could be. All of these things are happening all over the region. I mean, everywhere from Metro East to Cottlesville to uh, Ferguson to South County to downtown, everywhere. But like Lee said, people don't see what's happening outside of their own neighborhoods or their own um, little regions. So we're trying to kind of build this quilt of all of these great things that people are doing so that then people can cover themselves with the blanket of St. Louis, you know? Um, like Lee said, we, we don't have a narrative. This is kind of giving us coverage and giving us an identity of what we can build around. And that's innovation. That's doers. That's thinkers. Yeah. So if you wanted to sum up in an elevator fashion what this narrative is, we would say it, that St. Louis is the place where you can start up stand out and stay and that really will become the narrative platform on which all these stories will be built and then the movement that represents it is what you introduced us with and that is the stl made movement so what about some of those stories like i'm sure you've already heard some stories or you have some in mind i'm just curious we've been working on some stories for quite a while now um there are some really exciting things in the pipeline um a couple of them that i'm particularly excited about Um, are some of our um, talent retention stories. We have a story about um, the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra, you know, one of our crown jewels here in St. Louis. Um, There is a woman there, Angie Smart, who is a first violinist uh, for the symphony. Now her son is following in her footsteps, her teenage son. He goes to Clayton High School. Um, He's darn near a professional musician. He is that high a caliber um and he his dream is to is to perform with the symphony he's part of the the youth orchestra he's part of all these other chamber orchestras and groups um and it's just interesting to see you know how many how many programs we have in town to help teenagers want to stay and develop their own career path right here i mean how how many places can you go and say i'm going to work for a world-class organization and put my talent out there. I mean, that just doesn't happen everywhere. Um, So we're really fortunate about that. Um, Another one that we have coming up is about this woman named Mama Cat, Kathy Daniels. Um, She founded this group called Pot Bangers and they get together every week to create these these meals with love and to bring them to their unhoused friends. Um, As we know, St. Louis, has a lot of unhoused folks and there's there are some systemic things that we need to think about to solve for that um but in the meantime her her mantra is 
if you can share a meal with somebody, you can connect with them, you can treat them with dignity, and then they feel seen, and then that sparks other people. So we're just, we're really excited about things like that. So tell me like, um, what differentiates you guys from like a St. Louis Magazine or Riverfront Times? How are people going to discover you and then, you know, get hooked? Well, story-wise, you know, all of our great media thing, our great media outlets are covering all kinds of stories, but we also know that journalistic resources are limited. You know, there are only so many reporters to go out for all of these great things and important things that are happening in addition to news and all these other things that they have to cover. What we're hoping to do is kind of fill that gap um, and, and find those feature stories that, that traditional reporters don't always have the time to cover or the resources to cover. Um, and by doing that, we're hoping that, you know, we're doing a little bit of their homework for them so they can then see, oh, there's something here. I should follow up on that. And then maybe something bigger will come of it. But we're just excited to, to finally put the spotlight on these people who sometimes are overlooked, are, are in communities that don't always get the attention, um, that don't always, you know, people don't always see what everybody's doing. So we're happy to, to kind of push that, that attention their way. But, it, but it's also worth probably just highlighting the fact that we are not a news site mm -hmm. right? Um, and I have no intention of being and we're not an events calendar that's mm -hmm. going to kind of tell us what the latest greatest buzz things are because both those things are covered in spades. Um, it really is more about this idea of giving voice to the, the, the folks that perhaps don't have a voice traditionally. Um, and because of all the things that, that, that um, Alison mentioned, but that then can begin to demonstrate that there, there clearly is a, um, a, a contagion of momentum here that is building. Uh, we're not trying to put things in place that are not already here. This is literally about shining light on the things that are actually happening. Yeah, it's really in interesting. You know, you can kind of... Um this is going to sound so dorky, but you can kind of relate it to the punk scene, right? It's very DIY what these people are doing. Some of the folks that we're covering, um, they might have some media backing or you might have heard about them before. But so many of these people, these other folks are just they're just in their neighborhoods getting it done. You know, they're just like, I don't care who sees me. I just see a space and I can fill that. I, I know how to fix this. I know I know how to help somebody through this idea. Um, and that's what I'm really excited about. And, that, and that's what Renaissance is, right? Yep. Ground up. That's awesome. So, uh, Lee, in, in some of the questions pre-show, you mentioned that uh, places have a tendency to take on certain projections and that becomes the perception even though people come and go, like that perception remains the same. Let's dig into that a little bit. Yeah, so really, I mean, I'm a transplant, as you can tell from my Texas accent. Um, I haven't been in St. Louis my whole life. Um, I've been here uh, about 10 years. And I think part of the, the, the interesting point um, of the self-actualizing that this exercise has done for me personally is that even in the 10 years of living in St. Louis, I have learned to become a St. Louisan and that there are certain social mores that one kind of establishes. Um, obviously, I have my pet answer for where did I go to high school, because I even I get asked that sometimes. <laughs> um, but the, there is a sense of um, inferiority about being in St. Louis. Um, and part of that is that we, we think that the outside perception of St. Louis is going to be a negative one. Now, um, you know, to the point we made a bit earlier, we've done some research, and actually it isn't. In fact, it's difficult to even place us on a map half the time, right? I mean, when we asked that question, we were all over the shop. So St. Louis just isn't thought of that much, right? And, and, and you could argue, well, why should we be? And that's part of the thing we want to change. We think we should be thought of for a variety of reasons. But when you look in the mirror and you don't recognize yourself, it's going to be very hard to put, develop a sales strategy to tell somebody about what it is they should be looking at if you don't know it yourself. So really we are working around this idea that if we can establish a discourse for how we want to project our perception, and that at, at that point we will be able to go out and start recruiting the next investment dollar and start recruiting the next startup idea and start having the, the, um, the retention of our talent here. Um, and and that, I think that's something to be really excited about. 
Can I add on to that? I yeah, think yeah. I'm a transplant as well, and I've been here for nearly 20 years. And I think, like you mentioned, it, it's easier for us to see the awesome things that are happening here because we have fresh eyes. Those are the yeah. eyes that we want to to help St. Louisans have. You know, it's it's hard to recognize what's in your own backyard when you're so immersed in it all the time. If we can kind of give voice to those those fresh ideas and those fresh things, then, you know, hopefully people who already live here will see what a gem we have in this place. It's kind of interesting that we're our own worst enemy in that kind of storytelling of our own city. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd, I'd like to shift just a little bit. And like, we've talked a lot about storytelling, but how did you all get started in what you do, like with, with telling stories of brands, with writing? Like, what was it that got you started on that journey? Oh, man. That's, we'd be here for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a journalist by trade, and I've weaved in and out of media and marketing and agency life for 20 years. Um, storytelling is always at the heart of what I do. Um, my favorite thing to do is literally what we're doing now. It's feature stories. I love digging into the human aspect, and like you said, finding that spark. I wanna find somebody's why and bring that out, because then somebody else will connect to it. That's, that's the feeling that gives me goosebumps. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I think that it's, um, you know, similarly missionary in, in my own nature. I, I love people. I get on well with people. I think the connecting with um, a diverse set of people and identifying the things that unite us as humans without it kind of getting too kind of crazy is is something that I really believe in. And frankly, as a brand marketer, when you're positioning products or a service, pushing a sale is never really the best strategy for establishing a brand value and a value proposition. It's really about understanding the audience in which you're trying to reach. If you have a good understanding of what it is that unites them and the things that they are looking for to have their problems solved, then position it in that space and you start creating a movement. Um, really very similar um, borrowings of, of some of that thinking in the things that we've just been talking about. Um, my background, interestingly enough, I'm a theologian by, by academic trade. Um, no intention of being a person of the cloth or anything like that. It was just more about some of the ideas that, that um, have shaped who we are as people that I really wanted to understand. Um, and then getting into realizing that I didn't want to be poor. Um, I had to do something with my life. I found myself in brand marketing and saw enormous transferable skills. Um, and you could argue that some of the best stories ever told are the ones that are the oldest. Um, and, you know, a lot of the religious stuff is, is as old as it gets. So that's kind of where I come from. Yeah, that's really interesting. Kind of pulling from the same, the same format and what pulls on people's kind of soul and right. things like that. That's really interesting. Um, if, if somebody, let's say there's a listener out there that they want to pursue a path similar to what you've taken, what would you tell them? Oh, man. Well, it's a hard time for journalists out there. I mean, we all recognize it. Um, but if you have that spark inside you that, that compels you to tell stories or to share stories or to just ask somebody what the hell they're about, just do it. I mean, it's, you can't get anything better than that. Like, that is like my life stream. I can't imagine doing anything else, literally anything else. Um, and to find something, I mean, like, like this movement, to apply it to that, this is like a dream come true. I mean, it, it really is. I, I probably am sounding like I'm blowing smoke up everybody's houses, but like, this is amazing. To be able to find people who are legitimately moving this region forward and, and caring about other people caring about those spaces, those negative spaces. It's just, it just blows my mind every day. How about you? Um, I mean, I think that, the, you know, to the listeners, um, if they want to get into uh, storytelling, then the first thing is, in my opinion, is, is discover your own story because mm -hmm. you are, you have one and you're projecting it whether you are doing that consciously or not. Um, and, and I think that, that, you know, part of the social media movement in many respects does that in spades. Um, and I wonder how consciously we are aware of the story we are telling. And I think that's something that, that is, um, you know, kind of quite deep and uh, powerful. If you want to get into the kind of um, perception forming space as a career or if you're a startup and that is something that you need to kind of shape, 
I think part of the the exercise really is is having a, an understanding of the why you are doing what it is you're doing. Um, my my personal belief is that a, a brand strategist is is a why person first and a who person second, and the what and the how don't really matter. You've got finance people and operators for what for the what and the how, but the why and the who is is the the, the, the area of um, real kind of backbone that, that shouldn't ever stray. And that's where you get into, um, you know, the entrepreneurs that, that, that truly make significant contributions to the world because they're just missionary on those two things. So you guys hit the goals that you've set out for, for the STL and for the made, STL made movement. What does St. Louis look like in two or three years? after that i think if we've done our jobs right and if we've amplified the people who are on the ground doing the work right i think we'll see st louis as it really is not not just this cloud cover of the latest headlines but i think we'll see something that's inspiring i mean it's again like every day i am inspired by something or someone and it's just it blows my mind that so many people care and that we don't hear about it. So I would like to see more people who are out there busting their butts, trying to change things, trying to come up with awesome ideas, trying to position this place as the new industry hub for whatever industry, people who are training up talent and training up empathy and thinking through what all of these things are for. I mean, it's it'll be so great. It will. I love that. I mean, I, I, I agree that, that success is going to be about, um, if it, I, I mean, thinking about a medical analogy, I, th- I see that the narrative is really a defibrillator on an unstable heartbeat. And if we can let that go and stabilize the heartbeat of advocacy for ourselves, I truly think that we will have played our part because we really are not putting anything in that isn't already there. We are simply trying to articulate a more clear and more realistic picture of what is actually happening. And that's why I feel like um, success would simply be the advocacy for ourselves. And, and if you don't have advocacy for yourself, it's very hard to recruit it out of others. So uh, today's Tuesday, and in a couple days, uh, we have here in St. Louis what's called 314 Day. Now for the national audience, they probably have no, they, they're just like, that's Pi Day, right? What is it for St. Louis? Pi Day is pretty great. I mean, <laughs> 314 Day is a celebration of St. Louis. It's our main region's area code. Um, and we just, it's its a time to share everything that is awesome about this place. And that's part of, part of the STL made movement. Um, the people who are the doers and the thinkers and the feelers and it, it's a, it's a time to uplift everybody. And it's a movement that's gonna keep going. That's right. So 314 Day, obviously a pun in the, in the, in the fact that it's majority's area code, but it also does represent the kickoff of the movement that will go on in perpetuity. It is not a one and done deal. The reason that, that we wanted to um, do it at Venture Cafe is because it's something that exists already and we're very proud of it. Um, and we wanted to have an opportunity to um, wrap this idea around something that existed, bring an even bigger spotlight, if that's possible, to, to the St. Louis's um, version of it. And, um, and then from there, have a steady drumbeat of, of what this movement represents into the future. And Venture Cafe is the perfect place to do it. These are the folks who are those torchbearers, who are creating things and thinking through ideas and solving problems. I mean, these are the people that we're talking about. So if if you're listening and uh, you're listening right when the show comes out, either on Tuesday or Wednesday and or Thursday during the day, you have an opportunity to get to Venture Cafe Thursday night. W- what should people expect? Oh, we've got lots of fun planned. Wizards, jugglers. <laughs> All of the things. 
we're working on some uh, some great discussions um, about what is encompassing this movement, about some of these people who are pushing St. Louis forward. Um, we're going to be asking some hard questions and getting some maybe some difficult answers. We're going to find solutions. We're going to talk about the gems that we have. We're going to talk about what comes next for St. Louis. We're going to talk about how people can get involved. There's going to be a lot to do and a lot to take in, I think. Yeah, and there's going to be a festival atmosphere as well, yes. like there is in a, in a venture cafe. I mean, we're going to have um, St. Louis made food and beverage. We'll have art. We'll have, um, you know, sort of um, swag that we'll be able to take away and, and, and demonstrate sort of the ways in which we're bringing this to life. And then to Alison's point, the panel discussions are kind of a, a, um, a, a component of how we want to highlight the narrative we want discourse we want to be able to have a conversation in a collaborative manner as a region that that looks at things like um, what it means to start up a business in st louis and are we equipping those startups to stay we want to have conversation about um, how our art culture being very very rich is literally creating an equitable experience for all and actually uplifting the region. And we also want to talk about how um, the, there are people that are doing absolutely extraordinary things in the area of education, in the area of, of crime prevention, and all sorts of things, which we know as a region we have our issues, but you tell me one that doesn't. Um, let's talk about the people that are actually doing things about it as opposed to just describing what the, the, what the situation is. So that's kind of part of what STL May Day and 314 Day is all about. And for those who can't make it out and they're listening to this after the fact or a few months later, how can they get involved with the STL Made Movement? Where can they find you online? All of the above. Well, for uh, the storytelling aspect for the STL.com, um, we welcome suggestions. I definitely want to know what people are doing. Um, you can email me at editor at the STL.com. Um, you know, we just, we want to understand what all is happening here. And I only have, you know, so much time in the day to find these stories myself. So the more help, the better. Um, but you know, we, we want to know what your neighbors are doing. We want to know um, who we should feature in in this, you know, in a video, in, in a photo essay, in long form copy. You know, we, we just want to know more about those people who are driving St. Louis forward. Yeah, so if, you, if you've got an amazing story of, of someone that's doing great things, that's moving the region forward, get in touch with Allison. If you want to learn about some of the great stories, um, the stl.com is, is a place, but we will find you too. We've got a media um, strategy behind this that is literally going to be pushing out through social media the stories that Allison publishes that, that of some of the things that she's been describing. Um, and but, but also hashtag us. I mean, there's hashtag STL made is going to be a big deal. Um, and hopefully there'll be enough buzz that you'll kind of catch this. Uh, but, but we will find you as well. Awesome. Well, Lee and Allison, thank you for being on. Go check out the STL.com. Looking forward to 314 day. Thanks Thanks. for being on the show. Thanks for being on the show. Thank Thank you. you. For more episodes, visit innovationcity.co. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. And if you're in St. Louis, visit us on a Thursday night. Details at vincafstl.org. And connect with us on social at We Are Slam or at Venture Cafe STL. Thanks for listening. This is where it all begins. So say goodbye to all your fears, all your doubts. This is.